Every August, performers and artists descend on Scotland's capital for the world's largest arts festival. It is, in fact, made up of many festivals. The Edinburgh Festival Fringe, the Book Festival, Art Festival, International Festival and others. The Edinburgh International Festival was founded in 1947 in a moment of post-war optimism to provide what it called a platform for the flowering of the human spirit. It seeks to bring the best theatre, dance and music from around the world to Edinburgh and to position Scottish culture on a global stage. The idea of nationhood and of a national culture is particularly important in Scotland right now. In the recent referendum on Brexit, the majority of Scottish voters wanted to remain within the European Union, leading First Minister Nicola Sturgeon to suggest that a second referendum on Scottish independence is highly likely. But how will all of this play out at the festival this year? I think the question of, of nationhood and Scottishness is one that's been to the fore. It was to the fore in the Scottish independence referendum, it was to the fore in the Brexit referendum, and it's now in the fore to how we begin to think our way out of, of where we are now. Um, how that reflects itself back onto the programme, in a practical sense, of course, we want to represent the best of what Scotland has. But I think that goes way beyond that. I mean, it goes to the point where you would have the Scottish Ballet presenting the work of a French choreographer. You'll have Sir John Elliot Gardner, an English conductor, doing a German, or, um, a German piece of music or a German company doing Shakespeare. So the idea of, of, of nationhood, I think, is one that's really fluid. Interestingly, much more so than any other festival I've, I've worked on, it's completely understood as an international festival. And sometimes in other festivals, there can be a pressure, which is to be almost a little parochial. Um, whereas here, it's very much when Scottish work is of that quality, of course, it should be there, as opposed to anyone trying to necessarily push that agenda. So how does the Edinburgh International Festival compare to other cross-art festivals on this kind of scale? I think what's completely unique about Edinburgh is just the scale of what happens here. And in some senses, the unformed nature of what happens here in such a relatively small and very beautiful place. So it is, I mean, as people who've come to Edinburgh know, it's a complete immersion into that festival environment. And even in, in events like the Olympics or the World Cup, I just don't think you get quite such a sense that you know, you know you're in the belly of the beast when you come to Edinburgh North. John Tiffany is bringing his production of Tennessee Williams' play, The Glass Menagerie, which was seen on Broadway in 2013, to the Edinburgh International Festival. Tiffany has worked extensively in Scotland and is perhaps best known as the director of Black Watch, which was a hit for the National Theatre of Scotland in 2006. He is also the director of the current West End hit, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. We don't get kind of or, uh, American actors doing Tennessee Williams here, we often have it with British actors, so in some ways it's like when British actors like Mike Rylands go to New York and do Shakespeare and the New York audiences go crazy. What we're getting is the real deal. Cherry Jones, who plays Amanda Wingfield, is from Paris, Tennessee. We are in exactly the same place politically and financially as when Tennessee Williams set the play originally, which is kind of amazing. He describes a world where it feels like we're on the brink of revolution or at least some massive change. He describes a world where, as, he, as Tennessee Williams puts it, the middle class of America were matriculating a school for the blind. I think the Edinburgh Festivals, it, it, it's a great kind of um, filter, a prism for all those conversations about nationhood, Scottishness, Britishness. Um, you know, the first festival I think was in 1947 and it was started as, as, a, as, a, as a kind of very active ambition to try and reunify Europe after the Second World War, which is ironic, isn't it, given 
what we've just done as a country. Culture is one of the key ways in which a nation like Scotland defines its identity. And yet Edinburgh in August feels much more like a place of cultural exchange than of national sentiment.